Hello. Well, today I'm uh, continuing with my uh, favorites of uh, Quentin Tarantino movies from least favorite to most. And uh, we're in the top three. And so, you know, as I've uh, thought about all these uh, movies after watching them again, um, and looking at the list that I've made, rearranging some here and there and um, from a standpoint of enjoyment. My third favorite is Django Unchained. Um, now I know there are some people who are not um, the biggest fans of this and that's fine. Um, um, but I don't know, I just really enjoy this film. Um, you know, uh, Jamie Foxx uh, plays Django. A slave who, you know, Dr. King Schultz, played by Christoph Waltz, his second collaboration with Tarantino after, of course, Glorious Bastards. Um, and, uh, you know, he was freed. You know, Dr. Schultz is a former dentist turned um, bounty hunter and uh, takes Jago under his wing to be a bounty hunter and. With, like, well, with him, and from there, uh, you know, they're able to make a good amount of money, and uh, eventually they go to try and find Django's wife, Brunilda, who um, has been bought uh, by Calvin C Candy, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, um, who's, um, and, uh, Samuel L. Jackson plays Stephen, the, the house slave. Um, um, and it's a very brutal film, you know. It's um, when it really depicts uh, uh, certain aspects of slavery, like whipping and such. It's very. Uh, it doesn't try to sugarcoat anything. It's very brutal and it's um, very. You know, it's, it is well done in what it's uh, trying to achieve. And um, uh, Quentin Tarantino himself said, you know, on the day they went to shoot that scene, it was very, very difficult to um, just see it uh, play out. Um, and um, um, Franco uh, Necro. Um, Carol, I don't know if, how to properly pronounce his name. He's in this film who plays Django, uh, which is what the why the film is named Django. And he spells his name for him. He says, "Oh, the D is silent." And he goes, "I know." Um, which I thought was really cool. The fact that they got the original guy who played uh, Django back in 1966 to have a cameo in uh, one of the Indigo fights. Um, or two black men, you know, get into a fight and uh, basically have to kill each other. And uh, obviously, the one alive is the winner. Um, and that's a very, uh, very brutal uh, scene to watch. And then there's also a scene later in the film, you know, and also that fight is where we first meet Leonardo DiCaprio's uh, Calvin Candy and the DiCaprio is really a very unlikable character. He's, you know, just not not a very pleasant guy for obvious reasons. You know, he runs a plantation and he's very unapologetic in the sense of uh, what he does. Um, There's a reference to Pulp Fiction in this film. Um, Crazy Craig Coons, who is part of a gang in, um, in Pulp Fiction. Um, uh, Christopher Walken's character's name is Coons, so he's, that's a, relative, he's a descendant of that guy. And um, 
So there's a connection there. Of course, you know, fifth time Samuel L. Jackson has worked with Tarantino. Um, second time for Christoph Waltz, and the first time for DiCaprio. Quentin Tarantino is, of course, in this film also. Um, he's there twice. He's as Robert, uh, somebody who's in the baghead, like a precursor to the Ku Klux Klan, and they all have just bags on their heads. They're all complaining about how they can't see properly or they can't see anything and how one of the guy's wife made all these for everybody and now she made all this stuff and how they're all complaining and they, uh, you know, he's just like, yeah, you're all ungrateful and this and then. Uh, they, uh, one of them asks a guy named Robert who's Tarantino and he goes like, that's so good. You know, if I if I just look straight or, you know, looking at you right now, I can see you just fine. But when I'm on my horse riding, it just goes everywhere. And that was a Quentin Tarantino that he's later in the film as one of the Australians uh, transporting uh, slaves from one place to another. Um, and then he gets blown up. Um, so, spoil her for the second cameo, but it's it's very interesting to see, uh, you know, with these last two, this film and the previous one, uh, you get to see t uh, two Tarantino cameos, basically. Um, now, um, you know, the performances are excellent. Um, Carrie Washington as Broomhilda does an excellent job, and of course Jamie Foxx is fantastic as Django. Um, DiCaprio is a real scene st stealer, as is um, Samuel L. Jackson as um, Stephen. But also, you know, of course, you know, Christoph Waltz. He's he's incredible, and he won his second Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Though some say he was supposed to, he's like, and if you in a way, if you look at it, he's sort of like the lead, um, which. I don't think it is completely untrue, um, but it's just fascinating just to see how um, um, you know how just impactful Christoph Waltz is in this film. You know, you can see them as both both him and Jamie Fox as being the leads, while. Um, Uh, DiCaprio being supporting along with Samuel L. Jackson um, and of course uh, Kerry Washington uh, really excellent film um, a trailer for this box set which of course came out this came out um, this came out uh, exactly 20 years or so after Reservoir Dogs, so this obviously was not part of this collection, but I got this, um, uh, I forget when I got this, but it was just before I saw this. I saw it in the theater, and it was really good. Uh, obviously, I like it, but I remember seeing it in the theater, and I thought, this was fantastic, uh, and I saw it again with some other friends, and it was just really cool um, just to watch this film again. It was just uh, uh, it's one of my favorite films of 2012, um, and still is. Um, and, uh, it's one of my highest ranking uh, Tarantino films, obviously. Um, you know, um, Quentin Tarantino won his second Academy Award for original screenplay. Um, he's never won for director, um, but some have said that he's a better writer than director, which I think in many ways he is. Um, but there are moments throughout his filmography where it's like, that's very Quentin Tarantino. It's like, it's, it's definitely him. You know, nobody would really think to do a certain shot like he does or make certain decisions the way he does. Um, and they just, people sometimes just wonder, and of course in, he's 
influenced by so many films, he loves watching movies and sort of honoring them in some way, like, you know, the spaghetti western uh, with this film. But And that, of course, did cause some controversy to an extent because, you know, people were like, you know, this wasn't like some Sergio Leone film. Um, but, uh, and while that, you know, I'm sure some of those criticisms, you know, uh, you know, may be warranted, um, you know, just depending on how far you really, really want to nail uh, the criticism or go all in on the criticism. And But sometimes it's like people just sort of harp on something because people have heard others say something like that. Like, oh, it's trying to make light of slavery. Well, watching this film, I don't think so. It doesn't really make light of it. It shows... Slaves in chains shows them in, you know, in cotton fields, and um, there's one scene where, where you know, Crystal Holtz and Django are getting a bounty of some guys, and uh, that he'd be able to recognize, which is part of the reason he uh, freed Django. You know, he. Uh, Uh, needs somebody who can absolutely identify these guys you now because he's you know there's bounty out for them and so you know basically there's just some sort of description uh, not too well but you know somebody who knows for a fact what they look like well there you go you're able to um, you're able to get a just able to get a real sense of just how brutal some of the stuff is back then of, with slavery and I don't know it's just it doesn't shy away from that I think is the overall thing I'm trying to get to um, you know it doesn't try to you know sugarcoat anything um Maybe the stylistic choice might be something that could be uh, could put off some people, but um, for what the film is, I don't believe it's all that bad. You know, um, of course, with the guys, you know, they find them and kill them, but you know, I think that's the overall thing. You know, and you know, you see some of the brutality of the, the conditions of the slaves are in. Though, in some cases, it looks like you know, some are very you know, if they're like in the house. Um, they get to be or treated a bit better as opposed to those working you know, like in the fields and such and the guy one of the guys that uh, we see uh, running who uh, Schultz needs to kill um, the big daddy you know. uh, they go to his place which is just before we see the whole baghead uh, stuff, which, if, and Jonah Hill is uh, baghead number two, that's what he gets to be called um, for that scene, but, you know, we see a shot with the cotton, and, you know, he's aiming his rifle, he's asking, are you positive? He goes, I don't know. You don't know if you're positive? I don't know what positive means. It means you're, you're sure. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, I'm positive. That's what it's, it's what you know. shoots, and then see a shot of like the horse and then it there's blood and cotton gets blood all over the cotton and then guy falls off the horse dead and you know stuff like that you know of course things of that nature didn't necessarily happen back then because uh you know there were typically uh free black men that became bounty hunters, really, really, that didn't happen, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for my sort of rambling, but it's like, you know, I have a lot of thoughts I want to talk about, you know, there's, you know, from the people uh, complaining about some of the, because of the subject matter and how people think it's not dealt with very well, but then how certain elements kind of, 
kind of uh, feed into it. You know, I've just, you know, that seems to be a big thing for me here. I'm sort of all over the place here and there with uh, talking about these movies, but, you know, again, I really enjoy these movies, and um, especially now that I'm my top three favorite Tarantino movies, it's like, you know, so much has been said. You know, so much praise has been given to this film, and over the years, it seems like as time of what has gone on, some people are sort of like, you know, I don't like this movie much anymore, and, and and that can be, that can happen. You know, some people, um, you know, really loved a movie when it first came out, but then as time goes on, they don't enjoy it much anymore. But then, when you really think about it, sometimes people do kind of hear people saying stuff negative and perhaps some of those people always weren't fond of this movie or even other movies not just this one but that just this as an example you know this was a big hit so in a way that sometimes does cause people to go after something that was popular um, either because they generally don't like it or they do like it but they think it's overrated so they want to take it down a peg I think for some, some do sort of, or in the latter, they just want to take it down a peg. And then there's all, all those who sort of like, hear all this, it's been a while since they've seen it, um, and maybe they won't watch it, or if they do watch it again, it's they now don't go in it with as much of an open mind as people um, at least should when going to rewatch a movie to see if it's as good as they remember, or if it's just as good, you know, or if it's uh, just as good or if not better than what they recall uh, based off of their first time watching it, or however many times they've seen it since, their initial viewing, or maybe it's not even that great, you know, maybe as time goes on, it's like you're able to see in how it's not as great as you thought but you know in the moment it was excellent um, sometimes that seems to be the case I think people at least uh, the ones who are very vocal I think in terms of the negativity that's I, I find that's sort of the case like they hear people who aren't fond of it or they, they you know they say they like it and they give all the points as to why they like it then they point out certain things they aren't fond of so to them it's not as good and so for those people they then oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's not all that great or yeah, overrated or um for me i don't necessarily think it is overrated i think that things that have been discussed and praised um are warranted and the film i believe does deserve all those praises um again you can critique it for perhaps how it handled this uh, slavery angle but you know it's you know it's it's Quentin Tarantino also you know I don't believe it handles it in a negative way as some people sort of portray or say it portrays it as such a negative light or makes light of it I don't think it does because the scenes that are you know, uh, Broomhilla does get whipped, and that's not a very pretty scene. You see a guy sort of like getting ripped apart by dogs because he ran away from Calvi Candy's, uh, or because, you know, Mandingo fighter. And, you know, after he, be exp you know, he paid X amount of money for him, and he expects to get so many fights out of him when he pays such a lot of money, and he hasn't, you know, and he isn't at that limit to where he can just sort of like stop and won't be fighting anymore because you know he almost like the last fight he had he almost didn't win I mean he did win but you know and when you see that see that's brutal um, you know there's some very brutal scenes in this film well, depicting slavery um, also Zoe Bell is actually in this film. She's a woman with a mask over her face when it comes to the uh, 
scene where the guy uh, gets ripped apart by the dogs. Um, she has blonde hair. You can see like, the blonde hair and stuff, but yeah, it's... So that's another collaborator that is in this film uh, from Tarantino. Um, but yeah, I know part of this video is sort of a bit out there, but I was trying to sort all my thoughts out and yet because I had a point to where I was going but then like I for some reason my brain wanted to go somewhere else and so it kind of went there and then it's like no no you need to finish this and then it kind of had a some weird detour that was awkward so I apologize for all or apologies for all that stuff I also just can't talk uh, properly at this moment which is unfortunate but that does happen um but yeah I, I i enjoy this film i think it's an excellent film i do believe it is worth uh the praise it has gotten um i mean again everybody is different some people like certain things people uh, prefer certain films over others um but there are some people who hear something like that's negative and it's been a while, and it's, instead of just going into something uh, fresh uh, again to see if they like it as much as they did before, if, or better, or maybe they don't like it as much anymore, and ignore whatever negative uh, like review or um, video or whatever it was that made you want to just relook the the movie some people that happens some people like really loved something but then something was said by somebody they like and so that then starts the gears turning to where now they don't enjoy it um, and there are stuff that are films that I've seen that people do critique um, but I still love I love the Star Wars prequels to this day even though those are films that there are people who critique them and those aren't above critiquing, you know, no movie is. But sometimes the critiques aren't all that constructive, and they're, if anything, they're just nitpicks. And I can say that for some other movies, but, you know, I won't get into those right now. But I do love Django Unchained. I think it's an excellent movie. Great performances. Um, I think for those that were nominated, like, I think it was deserving of supporting actor and original screenplay. Though I do think Leonardo DiCaprio should have been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Um, but I guess if you really... I guess if they really wanted Christoph Waltz, it might have been a very good idea to have him supporting. Also, though, if DiCaprio was also nominated, and then you, I guess, get somebody or kick somebody else out who was nominated that year, too whoever that would have been, I don't know. If not Waltz himself, just somebody else, so Waltz and him could be up, and then, you know, you know, I guess it's a discussion for another time. I guess in a perfect world, if that existed, you know, maybe Waltz and DiCaprio could have both been nominated, and even tied, though. And again, I do think sometimes stuff like awards, like the Oscars and such, sometimes there are two performances whatever category that are just so good that you know these two people should have an Oscar and there should be a tie you know sometimes there is a clear winner other times it's not so much and I think if DiCaprio was nominated uh, of course I can't vote but if I was to vote I would be split but anyway that is my thoughts on um, Django Unchained um, I hope all of you are having an excellent week. I hope all of you will continue to have a great week. And we'll have a great weekend when that comes. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.